It's coming home, everyone. It's Jack, Ross, and Andrew here. Um, not for the World Cup, though. It's coming home for... I've not thought this one through. I was nope. going to try and equate the World Cup to Survivor Series. Yeah. War games. Teams. Like team based Team-based mm. competition. Um, and it, I think it's... Well, it certainly caught me and Ross by surprise. Were you aware that it was this weekend, Survivor yes, Series? I you was. were? Yeah, because I've been... Because I got multiple things to, to film and do and uh, so do we. I was panicked I know <laughs> yeah. I was panicked I, you see I over yeah. panic I over think and over panic so I knew it was coming oh, right. and it was all scary because oh. you don't let the heat get out the top I of your head with that hat on I can't help it like it's getting down. cold now it's getting cold I was I t- it really gave me a shock when I realised it was this yeah. weekend and I was sad about that how are we feeling Ross are you feeling alright about the show uh, it's we've been years in the making this one the war game as well yes one. it's no longer Raw versus Smackdown we've been calling out for a more storyline based mm-hmm. team affair the storyline might not have slapped for me. I would have preferred something more dastardly to have happened to necessitate mm. a War Games match, but you can't have everything. True. It's a step in the right direction for me this year, Survivor Series. Andrew? Yeah. Andrew? I'm, ha- I'm excited for it. The five matches so far on the card, which feels good. Obviously, these War Games matches are going to have some time dedicated mm. to them. Um, and maybe SmackDown adds one or two more matches. So quite a quite a nice, concise card. I was trying to think what else could they add to the card. Obviously, the War Games ones will mm-hmm. take of more time than yeah. normal so it does look like a small card but it's probably not as short as we short think, as we think but yeah. they've got the world cup going on the intercontinental title world cup yeah i think there's two them. matches on smackdown all right to have before we get to the finals well, Strowman beats uh, gunter he was so scared this week oh, no, it, was it made me sad made first me very misstep sad. for gunter on the main roster mm. Um, right then, we'll we'll go. If you don't know the if you don't know the format for these, by the way, I'll explain it very briefly. We'll go around in a circle. Uh, we'll uh, Ross, then Andrew, then myself. We'll all do three pitches each, and we'll be left with nine wonderful pitches for Survivor Series War Games. But remember the golden rule: it's not what we think's going to happen; it's, it's what, what we, we want, want to happen. happen. Oh yes, indeed. Ooh. Ross, what is your first pitch? It's like a floating head today. Look at a that. floating I head. Picked, Why? I picked the wrong jumper for the it's color nice. scheme. It's behind. like a mint. It's, it's like a very a Tory green. jumper. Anyway, uh, so very early on in the night. At Survivor Series, we get a promo from the Brawling Brutes where it ends with Ridge the Fridge shouting, Fight Night, like only Ridge the Fridge does. Mm. How do Fight you... Night. Exactly. He's nailed it. Immediately, we cut to a scene where the Bloodline have been watching the promo live and Roman's got his Royal Rumble 2016 AJ Styles entrance slash Sour Boy face on. And he says, Fight Night. Fanai, what the hell's Fanat? I don't know. Oh, sorry, I've done that wrong. Fanai, I don't trust the savage. You can't pronounce his T's in the match beyond. Sammy, you and Jay go and take him out. Fanai, I'm shocked and appalled. <laughs> you know what I'm on about. Have you seen Ridge shout Fanai? It's very unnerving. There's, one, no, there's no Yorkshire tea. No, no, no they're they're in. exactly. They're in. It's a good See, bit of wordplay there. <laughs> one more match on the card happens, and then Rich the Fridge is out the back, smoking his pipe in the car park all alone. He's scoffing his face with a hot pot and a pint of gravy. Oh, northern <laughs> boys love gravy. Sammy and Jay then attack him from the rear. Second degree burns are caused by a flaming hot pot to the face, while third degree burns are achieved by pouring the pipe and hot gravy onto Ridge's naked thighs. <laughs> Jay Uso sprints back to Roman Reigns, and he says, We got him! Eat! Jamie Uso. So replies with a bigger yeet because he loves a massive yeet. Uh, we got him, says Jay. Uh, I got in there with a bat and did it all by myself while that piss weasel Sammy, he stood there and did absolutely nothing. Mm. Roman looks on with the only kind of disappointment I assume a father could look at you with when you've done something disappointing to him. I would know mine died when I was four and my life was full of promise back then. <laughs> and then we have Sammy. He eventually saunters back into the locker room, you know, like a cockerel, like he would because he's just taken out Ridge the Fridge. We've seen it, but we've got a case of dramatic irony here. We've seen what Jay is speaking about and we know he's lying. Tensions build between Sammy and Jay and we're left wondering if Roman has recorded the show on Sky Digital, another Yorkshire reference. It is, yep. Um, <laughs> That's is that good, what you that. actually call it? Yeah, yeah. Sky Digital. That's Sky Digital. Digital. Uh, Will he get Jay back into line, even though Jay's clearly a lion bastard who doesn't respect the tribal chief? Anyway, now obviously the brutes need a new fifth man because Rich the Fridge is in hospital with degrees of burns up and down his body. Uh, the match rolls around and everyone's making the entrances. All four members of the bloodline are in their cage and their first man is in the ring because they'll get the advantage because they are the heels. Mm-hmm. Out comes Seamus, Butch, Kevin, Drew. Seamus is shrugging his shoulders. He doesn't know what to do. Butch is in tears because his pal's in hospital. Drew's very angry because that's what Drew does. And Kevin does doesn't really seem that arsed because he doesn't seem that arsed in the build of this match, does he? Not really. Not really. Well, <laughs> no. He's, he's been. <laughs> Yeah. He's more focused on Roman for himself, uh, yes, isn't he? Yes, he is, yeah. Um, I can see what he's coming from, though, so maybe we'll get there eventually. Uh, silence 
is a, uh, just co- covers the arena, a, a blanket of silence as confusion grows at the top of the ramp. What the hell are they going to do, screams Michael Cole. And then we have a dramatic pause. And then across the speakers in the arena, we hear Bloodline. I'm afraid I've got oh, some bad yes. news. Bad news, Barrett, who yeah. has been... Wow. Pro- who has been posting uh, less heralded workout videos on Instagram than the one Stone Cold Steve Austin has been putting out. He's in fantastic shape. He can lift a lot of weight still, even though his legs look like chicken legs. Mm. Very, very slender legs. Mm. Oh, you know what he get? That was really tall wrestlers. Don't he? He's a tall man. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a very tall man. But uh, he's been working out. He looks in fantastic shape. Um, and he just he gets up from the hand, behind the announcer's desk. Uh, sorry, I've written down here. I try to make a joke here and it's not quite landed. He is seen rising up from behind the announcer's desk, not like the way he would do when Mandy Rose appeared on NXT television. Television. Yeah, no, that NXT, makes sense. yeah, that makes because sense. of uh, yeah, yeah. penises. Pen- Willis. Um, uh, he slips on the red elbow pad and he's ready to help his pals of 20 years and also Butch and Kev too. He's got fighting boots on. He's wearing fighting jeans. Wade Barrett is a street fighting man. Rich, I should say, is clearly a nice fella and he's getting better as the weeks and the months go on, mm. but I just don't think the War Games matches for him. Uh, I would much rather see Wade in there, who's obviously death-defying, suicidal, homicidal, all the sidles, <laughs> uh, even Matt Seidel. But uh, I think he's in, in great shape and I think there's more of a story there with him helping out his 20... It might might be a bit of bias from me. I can't lie to you, but it's what I want to happen. And I would like to see Wade Barrett help his help his pals of twenty mm. years. Let's uh, go for it. LFG kids. LFG. 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 Now this is a yes from me straight away. At first, I was confused with all the backstage and the the gravy based assaults and oh, everything. Yes. Where's this going? Um, I agree that Ridge is getting better, but out of those five, if you were gonna like sacrifice one to get Barrett in there. It would be Ridge. Yeah. Um, and it's a yes from me because I remember the days back when the lads, they just called themselves the lads, they? were the they? lads, yeah. Him, One Sheamus, of them was a tosser. Oh, Del Rio, wasn't Bernie it? Del Rio. He's but, a tosser, but, but we'll forget about him. <laughs> but Wade, Seamus and Miro just used to have Oh, it's just so much. When one of them would win a match, they'd all just be buzzing on the yeah. ram. And, oh, you ever I... see Miro hugging Vince McMahon? He was the television yes. champion because he nicked a monitor from the announcer's yeah. desk. Yeah. Fantastic. That's so good. So for that reason and for, and for the hope that we'll get a, a, a comeback of that sort of banda, yes. then it's a yes from me. Get in. It's a yes from me as well. I think it would be a really nice thing to see Wade Barrett in the fold of a match like this. I mean, maybe it's too much of a of a big match for Wade Barrett to get involved <laughs> in, like his first match back he in a while. He can jump off the top of the but cage with a 450. Oh, shooting no stars and everything. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I... I I can't lie in terms of I would love to see Wade back in the ring at some point. I think maybe maybe it is in his future somewhere down the line. Uh, but to get involved with his boys is Irish and Scottish friends. It would be a and Birmingham friends. It, it would could be, be a lovely his son, thing to, to be see. fair from the bare knuckle box. It could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I look, yeah, that's that's really really good. And you added a lot of nerve and stuff in there too. So yeah. it's a, you said gravy, so it's an instant yes from me. You Straight like, off the bat, we do like gravy. I do, good. I do. We'll do. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> perhaps, not as, perhaps not as rambunctious. Does it as, feature uh, Ross's? It doesn't feature okay, Gravy right. or Wade Barrett, unfortunately. Uh, it's a no so, from me. Uh, we look towards this week's Friday Night SmackDown, where the Usos eke out a victory against Drew and Sheamus to gain the advantage in a men's war games match. Backstage, the Bloodline celebrate, but not before the Tribal Chief has a quick word with Sami Zayn. Roman confronts Sammy about last week as when there were uh, as there were a few tidbits to take away from that episode. One, when Roman entered the arena to clean house when everything devolved into chaos after the SmackDown World Cup match, Roman slowly approached and glared at a down Sammy in the corner before being interrupted by Sheamus, perhaps signaling something was going to happen there between the two. Uh, and two, also, when Owens entered the ring, he and Sammy didn't exchange any blows at all. Instead, uh, there actually didn't seem to be any animosity between them whatsoever, just a great emotional facial expressions to add to the drama of this whole shenanigan storyline. Very good. It all, as well, on Raw, we saw Kevin just being like, I still see Sammy as a brother too. So there's that in there as well. Little little bits, little seeds planted like a gardener. <laughs> little storyline seeds. Little storyline seeds we'll that get will a blossom. Forest of story. Exactly. So knowing that the inclusion of Owens in this match must be weighing on Sammy's mind, Roman offers the honorary U some motivation. He needs to know that Zayn will acknowledge him and this little bump in the road won't become a pothole. It's all water under the bridge for the tribal chief and since it's a reason to celebrate... Roman, oh, he's feeling a little bit oozy, everybody. 
If Sammy can put everything between he and Kevin behind him and prove his loyalty to the bloodline during war games, he'll change that honorary status and make him a fully fledged Uso. Sammy, elated by this, he quickly snaps out of his distant state. Of course, he's going to prove his worth and earn that title. There should be no doubt in anyone's mind he's loyal to the tribal chief. Roman smiles and nods, but cuts Sammy off to add one little tiny caveat. If Sammy should hesitate for even a second when it comes to Kevin Owens, the tribal chief is going to need to reassess Sammy's positioning at the table. So the men's war game Survivor Series match arrives, and it's a bloody lovely affair, I thought. It's bloody lovely. The bloodline have the advantage. Roman Reigns enters second to last and tears through the already heavily beaten brawling brutes and McIntyre, laying waste to everyone before the three-minute interval is up when Kevin Owens' themes hit. Uh, sorry, theme hits. He storms towards the ring and brings the table along with him because he bloody loves tables in war games, doesn't he? Does mm-hmm. all Managing to combat the onslaught from the five members of the bloodline. Well, four of them actually, because Sammy is at the very back of that formation until Owens is standing toe to toe with his bro heme. In a similar vein to what we saw on SmackDown, we get quite an emotional moment between the two where there's no animosity. The crowd are going berserk seeing these besties within the same ring together. And after some time, Kevin, he opens his arms. Come in, fam. Come in. Come in. Come in. He wants to embrace Sammy. And after some reluctancy, Sammy eventually goes to hug his brother and you can visibly see the emotions in his face. But as he does... Who should raise up behind Kevin's back and into Zayn's eye shot, but a seething Roman Reigns? Seeing this, Sammy breaks the hood, uh, the hook, sorry, and backs up before hoofing an unsuspecting Kevin with a low blow in the nads, bringing Kevin Owens to his knees. Seven, tr- uh, s- seven. <laughs> Sammy tries to console Roman. Seven. seven. That's a good name, right? Well, he's no. the he's one got from right in a box. He d- yeah. yeah. No, he hasn't. He floats to the air like Uncle Festa. Yeah, yeah, yes. that was it. Mixed up with the one you yeah. can't name, otherwise he kicks off on Twitter. Yes. Sam- <laughs> Sammy tries to console Roman and frantically tells him it was part of the plan all along. Look, I've proven myself to you, Tribal Chief. I'm on your side. I just had to. I had to fake him out. I had to fake Kevin Owens out. Right? It's, it, there's nothing going on. Roman get, begins to smile and nod again, placing a hand on Sammy's shoulder. You can see the relief in Sammy's eyes. He's like, he's he's covered it up pretty well, in him, right? That is until Roman commands Jimmy and Solo to hoist Owens up to his feet, ordering Sammy to deliver a halluva kick to his former best friend and pin him in the middle of the ring to really prove his loyalty. With Jimmy and Solo holding on to Kevin, Jay gets involved and comes between Roman and Sammy, questioning why the tribal chief keeps giving Sammy chances. He was never an Uso, he'll never be an Uso, and he's shown where his allegiance lies. And as this begins to get heated, as well as the brawl, uh, sorry, uh, and as this begins to get heated, as well as the brawling brutes recuperating from their beatdown, McIntyre flies into shot with a stray claymore aiming for Roman. Sammy's instincts kick in, though, as he pulls Jay into the firing line, oh, saving yes. Reigns by the skin of his teeth. This doesn't last long, however, as a bro kick takes the tribal chief out with Kevin, Butch, and Ridge keeping the other members of the bloodline at bay. Sheamus, getting redemption for his arm injury, hoists Sammy up and hits an avalanche white noise through a table to pick up the win for the baby faces as Kevin Owens stares on at his friend's lifeless body. Wow. Whoa. Wow. And uh, you've started off planting seeds, and there's even more seeds. There's, there's more, seeds. more seeds. We're seeds keeping there. going. We're keeping it rolling. I'm enjoying the gardening. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of gardening. I think Landscaper. I think it's a yes from me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't done any pitches on this match because I think that there's so many ways they could go yeah, that I didn't want to try. And I think they might actually do something really good. But I think, I think so too. It could possibly be in the form of this, like a loyalty test from mm. Roman and Sammy being caught up. So it's a yes from me. I like mm. it a lot. You know, you've ordered a pasty from Greg's yeah. and you open the bag and it's a different one. That's how I'm feeling right That's now. That's how you're oh. feeling right now. Just the, it, the moment where Sammy goes to hug Kevin. I don't yeah. like that. You don't like that? I think he should be loyal to Roman. Mm. I know but, we get but, there eventually. I know we'll plant the seeds. Why Why does he hug him? Just because of their history. Because of their history, right? right? He's a little bit conflicted as our Sammy. He goes to hug him because he's like, well, he is my brother, but then he sees Roman's face and he's reminded like, oh no, I want to keep up here. I want to mm-hmm. keep up here on this level. So he hoofs him in the nuts mm. and he's like, look, see, I, I'm proving my loyalty to you. It was just a, it was just a, a, a diversion all along. But he's been working for six months to become an Uso. He has. But he's best friend though, you know. Love. Uh, they're not, oh, they've been, Love. They're not, not been talking. Well, <laughs> your um, your pictures are like cutscenes from a computer game. It's because the way that I'm a nerd, aren't I? Fl- <laughs> I'm just a nerd, aren't I? So, right, I right. mean, you know, that, that's that's how I see life, right, in right. general. I'll give it a seventy-five percent. Yeah, 
I'll go for. I'll take that. That's a pretty good. That's a that's a good percentage. That's just a little one, but I would. A take. little, a little something. I like the final result. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my first pitch is about the women's war games match, Ooh. but also kind of another match as well. So I've said Rhea Ripley sort of features twice on this card because mm. she's in the women's war games match, but also she could play a key role in Bala versus AJ because mm. she's ringside. They've got Mia Yim into yep. who's now back to being called Mia Yim, by the way. Yeah. Um, to combat uh, her and try and nullify her and everything. Uh, and I've said that since the fifth member of Bianca Belair's team looks like it's going to be a big surprise, maybe Becky, maybe even Sasha, because it's in Boston, although I, I think it's probably more likely not. But mm. um, it looks more likely then that the heel team is actually going to lose this. Maybe not, but it, may, it definitely makes it more likely that the heel yeah. team is going to lose, which in the build-up, I actually thought that the heel team was going to win to try and get a new challenger for Bianca's yeah. title. Um, so I think we need to keep Rhea out of this match altogether. I know that people can be protected in War Games matches by looking strong and by not directly losing the match for their team, but in Rhea's case, I think we shouldn't have her involved at all because ultimately I want her to be the one to take the title from Bianca Belair mm. at the end of the day. Um, so to get her out of this match, we need Bala versus AJ to take place before it. And in this match, Rhea tries to get involved, but Mia Yim takes her out with a lead pipe to the knee because she's Mitchin, which means crazy in, in Korean. Korean. I said Japanese yesterday on the news. Oh. Sorry, sorry, everyone. I was full flight in the midst of a sentence. It just comes out sometimes. It's actually Korean from from what I've just heard there. Yeah. Uh, well, I, no, I think I read that her, did her parents call her it when she, her mum called her when she was a no kid? No idea. Yeah, Maybe, I don't know. She's mitching anyway. She's crazy. She's mm. battered her knee with a lead pipe. After the match, we see Bailey's team freaking out backstage. Oh, we need a fifth member. What do we do? The locker room door slams open. But we don't actually see who walks in, but we do see the reaction of Bailey's team, and they're all like, "Oh yes, oh yes, mate, come on, sound, yeah, I, I can't, Wicked. I've never been able to. What's that one? What's that? One? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Wow, <laughs> the women's war games match comes around. <laughs> I'll make their way out. <laughs> um, and uh, Belair's mystery teammate is revealed to be whoever you want. It's Becky or Sasha, whoever. Bailey's is Charlotte Flair. The queen oh. is back. Uh, and I checked this to make sure she wasn't like, well, well, I think she probably has been. Well, she got married. Let yeah. me tell you what she was doing last night. That's okay. why I sat here. She was taking photos. And on the captions, it was like loading and like, Come back. Oh, it's happened. She made it oh. too obvious. <laughs> oh. I really thought I'd like found something. Well, yeah, right, never mind. Because I, I saw I Googled Charlotte Flair and recently Meltzer reported that she's returning soon. This seems okay. very much like yeah, well. Mm. Um midway through the match, once all the wrestlers are in the ring, there should be a sequence where Bianca runs wild and is the only woman standing for a little bit. And at this point, just to keep her a bit strong, Rhea hobbles out from the back and wants to fight, but she's held back by like security and referees and stuff. They're like, what are you doing? And she's like, no. And Bianca's like, oh, come on. But it doesn't actually happen. It's just planting a seed like you like you said. like it. Um, Belair's keen too, but we're saving that one for WrestleMania. Anyway, Bianca's team wins, but now she's got a new opponent for the Rumble and it's Charlotte Flair. So it's not the most complicated pitch, but it is, mm. it is a return. There you go. I can see why you've gone that way. Okay. But I would rather, just this is my, this is what we want to happen. I would rather Rhea Ripley was doing a Shayna Baszler from Elimination Chamber oh, to get, yeah. to, to get to Bianca. Everyone. I, yeah, that I would can be good. see why you've gone for that. But I'll but, give it a tentative no, just because I would prefer something else. I thought we were going to do another percentage. 25%, yes. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad, that's a quarter. That's uh, all right. a quarter, yeah. Um, um, I, I mean, at least you still try to keep Rhea strong, which is a good thing. Oh, I feel like, I thought this one was going to go over really well. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, you started I, it by saying at least. I think, is, oh. I think, I think, You've got multiple surprises in there too, so that would still make for a fantastic uh, match as well. If yeah. it's Becky or Sasha, and if Charlotte's in the match as well, mad stuff off the top of the war games. Cage. Oh, I could be lovely. A lovely thing to see. Does EO bring another another bin into? I the saw room? a gif of that the other day. I can't believe. So I still good. can't believe she did that. How about She's Charlotte Mitchell. does that, but she does a moonsault? Would it? Would that would Charlotte work? do that? She no. always lands on her feet when she does that. She's crazy now. She's she's gone mental. Charlotte. Yeah. Has she? When she comes, yeah, we've decided. <laughs> Who has? She's like Wade Barrett. The Who's the suicidal thing? suicidal you just know. genocidal All right, man. yeah, she comes back. She comes back, she's wearing Sabu's tights. Yeah, she's doing all this. You can't be stealing uh, Liv Morgan's gimmick. No, oh, yeah. yeah she's, Sab she's Sabu at the minute. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I, I, it's 50 50 for me because there is okay. good stuff in there, but like Ross so, said. <laughs> I've got a 75% yeah, all yeah, right. together. Out still, of 200. That's still up there. Okay, that's yeah, still fair up there. Right. Um, but I, I would definitely like to see Rhea Ripley in that match and actually just absolutely battering. Yeah, everybody. that makes sense. Fair everybody. enough. Oh. Fair play. Oh. Um, 
It's Ross. It's number pitch number two from pitch Ross number Baines. two. Uh, the U.S. title triple threat. <laughs> three, the U.S. title triple threat match main events the show. Controversial, what? I know. Mm. We get a very quick match where Theory rolls up Rollins and scores a pinfall by grabbing the tights. Everyone in the arena, apart from the referee, has seen what's gone on, and there's almost a riot. It's that scandalous. <laughs> just, imagine, just imagine the shock and horror of it all. Think about the headlines caused at Survivor Series 2016 with Goldberg and Lesnar. These headlines would almost be as half as big, but still pretty serious headlines mm. nonetheless. After Theory does this act of debauchery, uh, we see a, a, oh, sorry, we hear a chainsaw revving. And then we see a chainsaw start to cut up from underneath the ring. Really crazy frog. Really, really crazy. Up rises Dean Ambrose in Shield Gear. Yes, the real, the real forbidden door has been opened. Yo, no cap. Yes, says the no cap for the video today. He grabs the mic and he says, Paul. Get out here! Because this is a shoot, brothers. Down, cold, uh, down comes Triple H and cuts a promo. Uh, sorry, down comes Triple H and Ambrose cuts a promo, John Moxley style, on what happened 10 years ago at this very event called Survivor Series. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what all these three Shield boys have done over the past 10 years here and all around the world. And finally, he talks about injustice because that was the very mantra of the Shield when they mm -hmm. first came in. And then he shows replays of what Theory did. Uh, I am a hound of justice. Awoo! <laughs> Mox Bros says. I've put together Moxley and Ambrose. It looks like Ambrose, but sounds like Moxley oh. because, I, you know, yeah, Moxley yeah. is just better in the I'm sorry. Like uh, Triple H then cuts a promo about loyalty and fun. Uh, and right into the face of Mox Bros. And then eventually he relents and calls for the match to restart because it's Thanksgiving season and there's no times for bollocks like the bollocks theory just pulled. Literally, mammal to a what for Rollins? He, he hooked the tights that... Is that what it's called when a man gets a... Isn't it um, a, a moose... No, a moose, moose knuckle. knuckle. A moose it. knuckle a moose will knuckle. go with. He's got one of them. That's how tight Theory had the tights. Is that what that means? Yeah. Oh, I've heard the term. I just never knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> After Rollins pins Lashley clean and sends the almighty off on an even more serious tirade against the majority of the roster, yes, I'm on board with the new serious theory and want that to continue because I now believe that theory, uh, that fella could actually be the next big thing. So protect mm. that man. They've been doing very good stuff over over the past couple of weeks. I'm enjoying it. Um, and also it ties into the fact that he's been making the thing about all these big things and premium live events. He tried to cash in and Lesnar got in the way. He tried to cash in and Tyson Fury got in the way. And now he's done this and Triple H and the Hound of Justice. John Moxley, Dean Ambrose has got in the way. It all makes sense. And um, then we have Ambrose and Rollins in the ring. They're singing American Pie and don't look back in anger. Maybe not that. They're just, you know, I've just said that for entertainment reasons, but they're having a bloody good time nonetheless. And obviously because of this, the crowd are chatting for Roman Reigns to down he comes, and even though he's an ass, these two men in the ring are his brethren. They're his brothers. So they all have a nice time as we celebrate 10 years of the Shield. Uh, before Moxley is being all like, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah, really cool time had by all. Yeah, yeah, I'm having He's like Triple H when the Batista turn happened. He does wah ba boom And then as they're all celebrating in the ring, BCC members, Claudio Danielson and Wheeler, spat in the face of Roman and Seth from behind, kicking off an AEW invasion of WWE that will culminate with two nights of war at Wrestle. WrestleMania winner takes all. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can you tell I was struggling this time? <laughs> yeah, but it's, yes, but it's hard to say no to it because everyone would obviously yeah. go mad if that oh, happened. Yeah. yeah. It's not what we think is going to happen. It's, it's what, what we want to happen. And that yeah. would be a phenomenal thing to see happen. I believe there's a way WWE and AEW can work together. Oh. And this is the bridge. I the, think the I Moxley think bridge. Be. Yeah. yeah. I, really, I don't think they would. You don't really think they will? Oh. Maybe somewhere down the line. Do you think? Not, not. I can't see Tony not ever do soon. It. Not very soon. What was the... Because I was trying to think of what happened recently where they wanted Billy Gunn on Raw, but who was it who said no because... Oh, yeah, them? I can't remember. Was it Triple H who was I like, you're not going to mention AEW? No, because Tony... I think Tony said that they wanted to at least mention AEW on yeah. their programming, and Triple H said no, I think. I mean, yeah. So I, I reckon Triple H has mellowed since then. Mm. Yeah. Big time in those six weeks or whatever. It's, been. Mm. it's, a, it's a yes for me, but it feels cheap. It feels dirty. That's what I'm all about. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> but it's what we—it's what we want to happen. So I'm going to give it a yes because in your heart of hearts, that is what you want, and that is what you've pitched, and you've put a lot into it. I was feeling like there's going to be some sort of, uh, you know, shield celebration because it's ten mm. years since that earth-shattering, ground-breaking faction turned up in the World Wrestling Federation. Yeah. 
So that's how I would do it. Well, fair enough. <laughs> that would be good. At first, with the chainsaw, thought it might be Chainsaw Charlie. I thought Terry Funk. Yeah. It's the, the, the build to Ambrose's best match, yeah, the WrestleMania 32 war against uh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, of course. Oh, he of course. Forgot, how to, forgot how to yeah. work the chainsaw. Now he knows oh. there's growth there, you know? That there's, was good, uh, that one, yeah. yeah. Really good. <sighs> yeah. You could almost tell Brock Lesnar didn't want to get hurt because he was going back <laughs> to the UFC a few months later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've mixed that up in my head. I, the, it was the next year, wasn't it, where he was on the pre show against Corbin? Yeah, that was 30. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Wow. Oh. Yeah, but he's pre- the wrestling god now. So. Same pre-show where your Gronk man uh, got involved for the first time. Gronk, he did. Yeah. The Gronk man. The Gronk Meister himself. Okay, I'm going to go to my second pitch now. Yes. Uh, we're going back to SmackDown again, this time to focus on the setup for the Women's War Games match. Team Bianca arrives to the arena to announce their final member for Saturday before succumbing to an ambush from Damage Control. Alas, to make the save is Team Bianca's fifth member, a baseball bat wielding Liv Morgan, chasing the mm. heels away and leaving the baby faces standing tall in the ring. Now, I say Liv Morgan because, right, we're announcing it on SmackDown. Not that, not that Becky Lynch couldn't, you know, go over to SmackDown now, but I went on the Survivor Series uh, page on WWE and it said featured wrestlers in there and Liv Morgan was one of the featured wrestlers in there and Ooh. she's not been announced for anything yet. Ooh. Maybe they just put them in there as placeholder, I don't know. But I'm going to say, just for this pitch's sake, so nobody takes a bad loss or anything, it's, it's Liv Morgan. Right. So we cut to a backstage segment with the team, talking about how excited they are to have Liv aligned with them. She says she has unfinished business with Rhea and couldn't think of any better way to extract her revenge. However, just like in previous weeks, and as seen on Raw, plus commented on by Corey Graves, Alexa seems despondent. And as the other teammates are chatting excitedly and hyping up the match, she notices the screen behind her begin to flash with the static and the certain imagery of one Bray Wyatt. And speak of the devil and he shall appear. As when Bianca, <laughs> as when Bianca asks Alexa if she's okay, Bliss clocks someone in her vision and the camera pans around to reveal the Eater of Worlds. Bray stands calm and asks you for just a quick moment with Alexa. He won't take up too much of a time. He apologizes for his past behavior and what he put Bliss through. He can't deny that in the moment though he enjoyed the fear and destruction they caused together, the power he held over her. But ultimately, there was a power held over over him too. And it wasn't the real Bray. And in fact, it was Bliss betraying the fiend and gaining control of her own demons that led Bray on the path he follows today. He thanks Alexa and again apologizes. But before they part ways, he says, look, I can see you holding back out there. I can see you're not yourself. I can sense all that rage. Just let it out. Don't let it consume you like I have, like I did in the past. Take advantage of your control, revel in what you are, revel in who you are. And then we cut to it's Saturday. Like poetry, this. Like, you're really good. Thanks. No, I'm really, like, you write, <laughs> it's like it's like a WWE promo. Like, you're really very good. kind. Thank you. So we cut to. Revel in what you are, revel in what you are, revel in who you are. Who, in italics there, and capital as well. Just said, nice. Hammer on the fuck. Hammer. We cut to the Women's War Games match showdown on Saturday, and things are going well for the Babyface team, despite them not gaining the advantage for the match. Thanks in large part to Alexa, who seems rejuvenated, adding a lot more ferocity in her, into her maneuvers and really going the extra mile to layeth the smackdown on the opposing team. Maybe perhaps she's a little bit too rambunctious, however, as some weapon shots and flying fists go astray, almost colliding with the teammates. In fact, one swing from a kendo stick does almost hit team captain Bianca before she catches it in between her arm and ribs, you know, like the dude, I got it. Like proper good, that, isn't it? Mm. And uh, (laughs) she catches it between her arm and ribs to pull it from Bliss's hands. The two exchange words, but manage to work it out, not without Bliss looking visibly frustrated, however. The end of the match comes as all the other competitors are down after some form of high spot and Alexa hits a twisted bliss on a former best friend, Nikki Cross. But instead of being able to capitalize with a cover, Bianca Belair springs into action and hoists up Nikki for a finishing KOD. Wanting to get retribution, however, on Nikki for costing her and Asuka the tag titles at Crown Jewel, and also feeling as though that's just been stolen from her by Bianca, Alexa jumps on Nikki before Bianca can get the pin and starts raining down a continuous flurry of aggressive strikes. Belair pulls Bliss off Nikki and starts berating her. Like, what, what are you doing? She says, just like that. What are you doing? What are you doing? But Bliss doesn't respond. As Belair pushes her to the side to proceed with the pin on Nikki, Alexa pulls in a team captain and hits the DDT. This, in turn, catches the eye of Bailey, who, lock, who looks on and laughs at what's happened, sensing her team is on the verge of victory. Bliss, 
has shown her true colors. She's aligned with damage control, surely. Well, no, not exactly. Because when Bailey goes for a handshake, Bliss pulls her in closer, kisses her on the forehead, and hits the sister Abigail, leaving Bailey's heaped body draped over that of Bianca's for the one, two, three. She's aligned with nobody. She doesn't care. She's just gone on off the rails. She's not necessarily aligned with Bray Wyatt. She's just decided it's time to take control mm. of myself. I'm going in for it. I'm battering everyone. Don't so care. I think I might have missed a bit. Or what? Why the bit I'm confused about is why yeah. did Bianca stop her from attacking Nikki Cross? Because basically the match was won at that point. So what? You're going too far. Yeah, you're going right. too far. I just need to get the pin. You don't need to. There's a bit of a bit of overkill here. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Yeah. So, oh. Like, it's a tentative no from me. I was struggling a bit with this. Don't worry. I think you're... I was going to say... I had in my head to say, but you are very brave. <laughs> you are very brave. You're a very brave man. Thank you. Because Thank you. you've tried to... You've tied in the weird ending of Wyatt's run. Mm. And the, the, I like that. It all made sense. Yeah. It was what was really a nonsensical thing at WrestleMania when Bliss was that stole his powers betrayed. and yep. then he was gone. Yep. And that never made sense. And no. you've actually tried to explain that. Mm. So I commend you for that. Thank you. But I... Think it's too bliss centric for a war games. Match. Oh, okay, that's, that's no, that guess. okay, yeah, that I'm, makes that makes I'm, sense. I'm deeply concerned about what happens after war games with this pitch. Yeah, if she's not aligned with Bray but uses his move to do bad things, what yeah. happens there? Is it just going to be a game of catchy kissy like it is in most wrestling these days? Oh, I want to recruit you. I want to be with you. No, then, I think no, I don't want to be with you. But I want to be with you. no, and it just goes on for weeks and weeks. Is that what? Gonna... Maybe I'm just thinking about it too much, right? But I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so Bray's, Bray's basically, he's apologized for everything. That's kind of like just severing the ties there. Of, we've explained it. We've described what's happened and what went on between the two. We don't need to revisit that any further. But Bray's just like, just, just be yourself. I can tell you're holding back. Just be yourself. Don't let like all the rage and all this rubbish consume you and everything like that. So she's just like, well, I'm not doing anything of, uh, of, of no... On the babyface team, as a babyface, I'm just not feeling myself. I want to be a heel at the same time. I just want to be myself. So she's just like, I'd use the moves. I do the DTTs. <laughs> I kiss people on the head and drag them down to the floor. I'll do whatever means necessary. I just want a like. I want a switch for Alexa Bliss because I, I feel like for a while we've wanted her to do something different. And I feel like with them mentioning it on commentary, it feels like that is coming at some point. I think maybe she could cost uh, Bianca. Bianca's team, the uh, the the match at War Games, um, and I just want to see it. She's so good as a heel. She's really, really good as a heel, and something's been missing for a long time with her. And that's not necessarily her fault as the booking at the same time, you know. So yeah, if that direction was back to like the, whatever the goddess was, the go yeah, then. that's what I was kind of thinking. I'll of. give you a yes, the no. Oh, okay, oh. Thank that's you. the direction. Thank you. That's the because she does just she has just sounded bored for a long time now, but I don't yeah. know if that's deliberate. I think well, the fiend's always there with in the what, back of her mind. Yeah, with what stuff was being said on commentary this week, I feel like it is deliberate. <laughs> Something seems deliberate. Isn't it? Fair enough. Um, I, she got a, she got a injured by a dog the other day. So, oh yeah, she got scratched. Dog was slip the or dog was too right? excited when she got home. Too rambunctious. Yeah, <laughs> sad. Uh, my next pitch is oh, it's a controversial one, but I'm going to include. A traditional Survivor Series match as well. Ooh. Team old school versus team new school. Um, I'll explain. I'll tell you the teams now, and then I'll explain how this came to be. So the old ones are Miz, Ziggler, Sheldon, Kofi, and Woods. Mm. The new team, Loomis, Alpha Academy, and the Street Profits. It's a weird team. Okay. Uh, I've said, why would these teams team together? Miz wants protection from Loomis, so he enlists all the guys, but the New Day won't do it unless they agree. They all agree to have retro-style like costumes, like the good old days. I like it. Uh, which I think the New Day actually would do. Um, so they all pay homage to old greats. Ziggler is Shawn Michaels. Shelton is Mr. Perfect. I couldn't think of one for Shelton. Wrestle <laughs> wears a blue yeah. singlet. Maybe a blonde Could wig. Could dye his hair again. Minnesota? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Minis oh they're both from Minnesota as well, Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He could also mm. be X-Pac if he wanted. <laughs> they're from Minnesota. Or Brock Lesnar. Or Brock Lesnar, yeah. yeah. Uh, Miz reluctantly gets involved as Rick Martell. Kofi and Woods are the Killer Bees. I don't know. Oh, I that's a good I one. I think they'd enjoy being the Killer Bees. That's Bee. a good one. Uh, the new lads also dress up, though. The Street Profits are the Road Warriors. Alpha Academy are the Heart Foundation. Um, Brett is yep. Gable's Brett, and oh, this is Jim. And Loomis is Nails. <laughs> so oh, with wow. Vince not being around anymore, they'll probably get away with Nails. Yeah. Um, the match does have an actual purpose too, which is to make Chad Gable look good. Loomis chases Miz away halfway through the match, and maybe we get some shenanigans later on backstage, but this ultimately all leaves Gable 
three on one alone with the New Day and Ziggler. He bravely manages to beat both of the New Day, but it's a long and exhausting effort, and he's left one on one against Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler is Sean Gable's Brett. Ziggler gets him in the sharpshooter. <gasps> Gabe, yeah, um, I like Survivor it. Series. Yeah. Gable, re- Gable reaches back. Triple H is there. Ring the flipping bell. <sighs> Chad Gable's the new Andy, Andy establishment hero that we all need. And there we go. It's a yes from me because it's it centers around Chad Gable and he loses. I really thought you were gonna say it because it's got dressing up. It's got dressing up in as well. There's a bit I can see the comments coming. Dexter Loomis hasn't earned his contract yet. That's the only thing. I thought it was this week. It's next the week after Survivor Series, isn't it? Damn it. I really when I wrote that, I thought it was this week. I've got you covered, don't Oh no, because he's on raw as well. It wouldn't have been Mm. this week. That's the only issue though. Aye. Chad Gable's at the center, there's there's fancy dress, I'm on board. Fair enough. I agree. I also was thinking, why are the the other team dressing up? If it's not just like the Mrs. Oh, team. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's fun. Let's have a good time. Yeah, exactly. No, Someone's that's true. That's true. That's true. I, I think the, the Street fun. Profits would want to dress up anyway. They're fun. That's true. Yeah. I think Gabriel and Otis are fun in a different way. They are. In an evil they are. way. Uh, Loomis. They're all because they're, they're all fun. fun. They're, they're all, all fun, fun in different people, ways. Yeah. The Loomis I don't know why I don't know why they'd team together though. That's a it's a weird mishmash of heels and faces. Yeah, that'd be some way around. But um I enjoy it again. Like Ross said, it's Chad Gable centric. And whenever Chad Gable is on TV, I'm always happy. I do realize I've just given the big win in Survivor Series to Dolph Ziggler, who probably needs it the least out of everyone. <laughs> but, you well, know. I, he's not been doing too much. I'd for just a long love time, to see he? them recreate the ending of the screw job. And yeah. I think that Ziggler could do a really good impression. You know, when Sean pretends he doesn't know what's happened, he's like, yeah. Oh. yeah. I think Ziggler would be really good at that. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see good. that. Yeah. Where is Survivor Series, actually? This, Boston. Would it. Would it the, be the same. The Would it have the same effect? Well, it's, that, up, it's up north. It's a similar area. Yeah. Yeah. The famous rivalry between Boston and Cleveland. Yeah. That's yeah, where Zig, yeah. That's where is. Ziggler's from. I don't know. There is a... Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, it it yeah, sounds I, fun, Jack. It's cold in Boston. It's cold in Canada. Yeah. There you go. Same thing. Same yes. thing. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, Ross, you're, uh, is it third and final one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah third and final This is victory. serious, by the way. I've done my stupid one second and my serious one third. Um, but I get the feeling that the uneducated, the unwashed, the not watching NXT WWE Universe is not on board with LA Knight. So, Friday SmackDown, he cuts a promo from his hospital bed saying he's going to be at Survivor Series and if that Rudy Poo candy ass Bray Wyatt wants to see him there, that's all fine and dandy, yeah! That's because, of course, last week Uncle Howdy piled a massive pile of uh, things on top of LA Knight, which nearly killed him. Uh, out comes LA Knight at Survivor Series. Uh, we're sat here on Wednesday and there's only five matches on the card and one of those matches is Shotzi versus Ronda, which surely won't last that long. So in my mind, we've got the time without taking the piss. Um, let me talk to you, yeah, says LA Knight. Basically does the same promo that Bray Wyatt did to him on last week's SmackDown, but laced with irony. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to give you a cheap shot. That two-for-one special. You should count yourself lucky, you son of a gun. That's one hell of a deal, he says something like that. Lights go off. <laughs> Lights go off in the arena. Nobody can see a thing. And we get a repeat of what happened at Extreme Rules with the human versions of the puppets appearing one by one, but they're not in the crowd this time. They're around the ringside area and they're surrounding LA Knight. Now, I'm going to steal from the great sea, everybody. I'm thinking Enzo Amore's promo on the entire Cruiserweight division. Oh. Just let LA Knight go in, tearing down Huskus, Ramblin' Rabbit, Abby Mercy, and most importantly, The Fiend. He needs to go in doubly hard on The Fiend. Ten minutes of fire that has the people laughing because it's full of fire. It's, it's just very good but he's still being a heel, so it fits the story being told against Bray Wyatt. Uh, we need to get the masses seeing what we saw in NXT. He needs to be saying a lot of things on the show that make you feel like you're watching a slightly better version than Dwayne The Rock Johnson because that's what NXT did. There was this promo where he walked out of his red Corvette speaking about the Kevorka and the Chickadees. He's walking. It's one continuous shot, mm-hmm. and I thought I was back in 1999. Uh, and I know what you're thinking as well. Doesn't this bury the characters? And I'm thinking, no, because just as they're hearing all what uh, Ellie Knight's got to sing, they start getting closer and closer and closer to the ring. They're up on the apron. They're just about to get into the ring to kill Ellie Knight, but Howdy appears on the Tron uh, saying some sort of bollocks like that stops them doing anything to Ellie Knight, but warns Ellie night that if he does something like that again he'll die uh, basically I feel like we need to get more promo time from LA Knight to get the people on side because I get the feeling that not too many are believing that he's the sort of caliber of opponent that Bray Wyatt should be having mm. as his first one back so the more promo time he gets the more people will believe I believe yeah. I believe in LA Knight and and also the puppets can take it because the pup, they've got thick skin no they <laughs> haven't been involved since the start and this potentially gives them sort of like 
inspire to get more involved and do creepy, spooky bollocks and just, you know, maim people. Yeah. It's a yes for me because this is a storyline that I'm worried about. Yeah. Because I think either way it goes, it's bad because Bray could destroy him. And that's obviously sad because it's LA Knight. Yeah. And, if, and if it's the other way around, then it risks... You can't have him look too competitive against Bray. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this has been a nice... This is a nice middle ground. It builds up LA Knight, mm. but it also keeps Bray scary as well. Yeah, there's a lot... I guess there's a lot to... Um, quite a bit to rectify for LA Knight with the Max Dupree stuff. And I suppose that's probably why a lot of people aren't behind him on the main What roster. is the explanation? It's just that he believes in himself again. Yeah. He doesn't like that name. He remembered who he was. He remembered yeah. who he was. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So I think it's taken some time, but when LA Knight's on screen, he's always so good. He's electrifying. So he, he's electrifying. He really is electrifying. When you when you first said like he's like the Rock, I was like he's having me on here, right? And then I started watching some more stuff of his, and I was like, ooh. I'll be honest with you, I didn't see too much of Eli Drake up until NXT. Yeah, but that was my feeling. Like I, people think it was ironic, I guess, but I thought he sounds like the Rock. He does. He does that interview with Chris Van Vliet, and he just does sound like the Rock with his mm. normal speaking voice. It's really strange, but um, any any time, any time he's on screen is really captivating. I think so. More more time for him to have the mic, absolutely. Uh, as you said, though, it's a bit of a weird first uh, feud for Bray yeah. and also, I guess, for LA Knight on the main roster. I really can't believe it. I think it was 20... Whenever we went to Wrestling Media Con, right? 2017, 17 or 18? 16. No, because we'd already started here. Oh, right. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was yeah. 18, yeah. 18. He was there, wasn't he? That's the thing. We were in the presence of him and yeah. we never... We just totally took it for granted. Wow. It's, just, it's like when you're walking down the street, you, you walk past, is it four murderers every two miles or something like that? Wait, is what? that true? <laughs> is that true? <laughs> statistic? It's statistic. Depends where you are. It's quite it? a lot. Are we talking about people murderers or like yeah, just all murder sorts of yeah, murderers? When you're walking down, you know, Northumberland Street in Newcastle, Jesus. there'd be two or three murderers. You, ah, walk you were casual. so close. You just don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. We were that close to greatness and we didn't know. Is he also, a murderer though? No, well, he kills, no, he kills people on the mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. we were also close to Mark Labbitt from the Chase. Large man. No, he's, he was, is uh, he like a GM for a? Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's he married his own cousin, didn't he? He didn't yeah, unwittingly. He didn't. He <laughs> just didn't realize. Out, yeah, he didn't realize. <laughs> Dan loved that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he's massive. He's like <laughs> so boy. tall. He's like six foot eight or something. He yeah, looks ridiculous on camera when he's on the chairs. Yeah, scary man. He's not on a platform. He's just stood. <laughs> it, it's, it's just his legs. Stood back there, yeah. Like stilts. Uh, I was trying to think of a way to... What's your second pitch? <laughs> my <laughs> I couldn't my think final of a... pitch. I'm um, sorry, your third pitch. Yeah, your third one. My final pitch. Uh, it's it's sort of um, NXT-centric as well, which you, people, you might people, be... People are, people are turning off in their drawers now. You <laughs> might be excited for. But um, So we move on over to the Triple Threat United States title match. Uh, it's, it's quite a basic pitch, this one, but the match itself could be a hidden gem. On an already strong, it's a pretty strong card as well. Give or take, our match maybe. Oh, oh, not too. I'm not a big believer in the Shotzi versus uh, Ronda match. Could that be a squash? Could they be. Do Could I think be. it might be where Sasha returns or something like that. Oh. They're not, they've not built the Shotzi at all. I no, believe, that's the thing. Couldn't yeah. believe last week's SmackDown. But, she needed yeah, Raquel to help. Need, her, yeah. yeah, she's not gonna be there at the pay per view. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the premium live event. Anyway, with a vengeful Bobby Lashley on the war path to regain the title, he feels he was uh, he feels that it was robbed from him. And a more dangerous Austin Theory, who has nothing to lose, Seth Rollins has his work cut out for him to retain the championship. Seth, I've said it twice now. Seth had his work cut out for him. Never mind. Not that he didn't know that he was uh, not that he didn't know what he was in for, but it's a much more back and forth affair with many a close call. Seth keeps clinging on for dear life throughout the match, kicking out a near falls and finishes whilst breaking up pinning attempts between Lashley and Theory by the skin of his teeth as well. Seth is fighting so hard to retain the title that much like that over the last few weeks, he's organically getting a baby face reaction from the crowd. He's even playing into that role, trying to rally the crowd behind him when he goes for dives to the outside and climbs up to the turnbuckle and everything. So basically the crowd are 100% behind Seth as this fighting baby face by the end of the match. After escaping a dominator attempt by Lashley and hitting the discus forearm to the back of the head, he hits a, like a, a stomp on Theory. You know where Theory does the through the ropes, he does the roll and then the drop kick? Mm -hmm. Well, is he's going to do the roll, Rollins comes up, boof. Have hits they not a stomp done that to his between head. them yet? 
I'm surprised. They might have done. I can see it. I don't think they it have, could but have been something, but something it. like that. If no, it's not happened, shout. it could happen here. And Rollins picks up the win in extreme in an extremely hard earned victory. Exhausted and beaten, Rollins can barely stand to celebrate his win as the crowd cheer when the moment is interrupted by a certain someone's theme music. The name of Grayson Waller fills the screens of the Titan Tron as the heat magnet himself casually waltzes towards the ring with a humongous poo-eating grin stretched across his face. Hi, guys. Sorry, so... Uh, hang on. Yeah, hang on. Hi there, guys. Hang oh, sorry, hang, guys. Hang on. Hi. Hang on. He cockily glares at Rollins, who's still struggling to his feet after his hellacious battle, slowly takes off his sunglasses and averts his gaze to the United States title. Seth sees this and goes to pick up the championship, but before he can, Waller dives through the bottom rope uh, from the outside to hit that delightful stunner he hits. It's bloody, it's a thing of beauty, everybody. As he stands tall in the ring, we see Rollins writhing in agony as he painstakingly crawls towards his championship, but before he can get his fingertips on it, Waller picks it up and lifts it high before throwing it back down directly in front of Rollins. We've heard we've heard things recently about Grayson Waller perhaps getting like a big old Kevin Owens style main roster push, mm. um, and maybe doing something like this, going straight for the US title, might be the way to do it. I feel like I've missed that. Yeah, the Grayson Waller. Was there been stories of him? I think there's been stories. Ooh. Yeah, some news news outlets have been they do uh, reporting on it. He is often featured quite centrally on NXT, so it wouldn't mm. surprise me. They do seem quite invested in it. Mm. Um, it took me a while a while to come around to Grayson Waller. But it did he is, me. He's just a he's like a Roddy Strong sort of heel, where he's mm. just very basic in what he says. But that's the point. Yeah. So I'm on board with Grayson Waller now. So I'll give it a yeah. Thank you. It's nice to see promotions from NXT. Well relegations from NXT to the main roster mm, mm. Uh, go as well as they used to do with, you know, like the, the likes of Kevin Owens yeah. and people like Finn Balor. So, yeah. I'll, go I'll give it a yes as well. Thank go you. Thank yeah. you very much. Fair enough. That's very kind. That's good What's your final pitch? My, more, uh, my final pitch also is the US title match Ooh. too. Um, I wish that I'd, I wrote this one like really quickly before this video. So <laughs> I wish that I'd swapped it around so I'd done my fun dressy up one last, but mm. this is just the... Anyway, before the US title match, as he's making his entrance, Bobby Lashley is pushed off the stage. Wah! It's a wild... I've just... I've wah! wah! It's a wild-eyed Mustafa Ali who takes his place in the match. So I saw people complaining on Twitter, the inspiration behind this pitch, because Ali was once again punked out on Raw. Mm. He's just... Everyone's punching back at the minute, so I want him to get a bit of his own back. He's yeah. pushed Bobby Lashley off the stage, which is a bit heelish, actually, but... It's fine. Um, it's a wild-eyed Mustafa Ali who takes place in the match. Lashley is taken away by medical staff as Ali forces his way into the match. Backstage, we see Triple H trying to get to the ring with security to stop him, but they keep getting lost. I couldn't think of a reason. Where we go? And also, I've been re-watching <laughs> the scenes from This Is Spinal Tap, but you know yes, where they get lost. while they're walking around there. Hello, yeah. Cleveland. Yeah, It's very good. So Triple H is getting lost still. Jericho did that, didn't he, in WCW? Yeah. Oh, he yeah, couldn't he couldn't find did. the ring yeah. with yeah. Um, Thingy, his sidekick. Um, Ralphus. Ralphus, that yeah, was yeah, yeah. Um, Ali actually bloody wins it as well, rolling up Seth. Oh. Um, security arrived to apprehend him, but he runs away. Triple H says, no, 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 you're not officially in this match, so it must continue. Uh, but Ali's like, no, he's off, like, out through the crowd. He doesn't come back. He's got the belt. Uh, Seth wins the match anyway, but he doesn't have the belt. So he beats Theory, but he doesn't have his belt. He's fuming. And this sets up a best of five series with Ali for the belt. Um, the first four are singles matches and the final one's a ladder match. I didn't want to... I started Ooh. sitting down and trying to think of like, well, no DQ here and then I quit. And then I thought, no, I, the singles matches let them build more of a story and then the final one's a ladder match. So mm. But anyway, that was my kind of hastily put together final... I would pitch. say it's your best pitch of the video. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It's, uh, I'm on board. Because you can't get behind a loser, can you? He's you getting... Know, I know. He's getting everywhere. He's getting beaten up. Even Ricochet beat him. How do you do? How do you do a standing shooting star Oh, bread? God. How does that even work? That's how he lost on SmackDown. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I know they've obviously given him like the rib injury thing to feel sorry for him, but it, it almost feels uh, sad at this point, doesn't it? He's uh, a lot better than what he's been given. Yeah, yeah. he is. He I really, really think, is. like, pound for pound, he's got he's got everything. He can yeah. do promos. He's really, really good in the ring, and I think that the, it felt a bit rushed because it was that pitch, but I think it also makes sense because they need to, like, fast track it. It's, yeah. They're losing. The, the window's closing on Ali. And that's a really good way, I think, like, a series to get behind him again as well. Well, I just... I, um, that was because of what AEW were doing with him. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, but you still, knew, but yeah. it works though in terms yeah. of building him up again as a character. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then a ladder match at the end would be amazing to see. I love a singles ladder match. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We don't get them too often, do we? Now. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm. No, we don't. We should. No, we should. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm surprised but relieved that that final pitch was the best received of the three. Yeah. Um, but what did you think of any of these pitches? Do let us know in the comments section down below. There's a lot to there's a lot of Survivor Series stuff going on this week. Yes. So you're on the live stream. So I'm on the live stream with Adam, me and uh, Adam doing predictions tomorrow as well. Uh, on the live stream on Saturday, so come and join us for I'll, a nice good time. I'll be doing what happened at immediately after the show itself, like a recap. Yeah, and WTF will be out on Sunday afternoon, evening, some sort of time, wherever you are in the world. Um, <laughs> this just feels like it's come way too soon. To the last pay-per-view. Like, it's, really it's, the, it's the last pay-per-view of the year, though. Yeah, yeah. Come on, we can do it. Don't um, say that. We're wrestling fans. Oh, I I'll be missing so my long. December TLC. And there's no day one. There's no day one, yeah. Wait until the run one, huh? Mm. Oh man. How long? That's two whole months without a premium live event. Gosh darn Shucks. it. Gosh darn it. I'm legitimately sad. Leave your opinions in the comment section down below. Leave your own pictures as well. Why not? And thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Jack. This has been Ross and Andrew. And we'll see you very soon.